question made you a little bit nervous to think about. <laughs> so was it much different to be the commander on Expedition 33 than being the flight engineer on your previous mission? And how was it different? Yeah, well, um, I think it's more nervous to think about than actually do. <laughs> when uh, I think it's, you know, it becomes natural up there. Um, I mean, it's the place that you live. It's the place that you work. It's it's what you're doing. It's just, uh, you know, be becomes your your life. And so you don't really think about it too much while you're up there. So I think the nerv nervousness went away. I think, um, though, living up in space has its own uh, issues. It makes you, again, maybe potentially a little bit nervous just on a, on on an underlying basis just because you know you're, it's, you're in an environment that uh, things can go wrong, so you have to be always on your toes. But not in general. Um, you know, it, we transitioned from uh, Gennady Padalka as the commander to myself as the commander between 32, Expedition 32 and 33, and, um, you know, not much changed. Uh, I've got, I had a great crew that I worked with, Yuri and Aki, and then when Kevin and Oleg and Yevgeny came on board, it just felt like a big family. Um, those guys are the two Russians, Oleg and Evgeny, it's their first flight, they're rookies, and so they were calling me mama. So, <laughs> so I think that was the, the only big change when those guys came on board. And uh, you performed three EVAs during this increment, and now you have more cumulative spacewalking time than any other woman astronaut in history with over 50 hours. Uh, so how difficult was it to have only one of those EVAs planned ahead of time? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, we were lucky to even have that EVA planned. Uh, you know, it was a, a neat opportunity to get out there and change that box, and then, then things just didn't go as planned, and then we really had to make sure that box was fixed. So it was the main bus switching unit. And then the second one was uh, to hopefully recover some of the uh, ammonia radiator system that might have, might have a problem. So... Um, I don't know how difficult it was. You know, we have the skills. This is what we do. It's what we train for. Everybody in the office goes through a program to make sure they have the spacewalking skills. So I don't think it's anything extraordinary. I think I've said it before. I was in the right place at the right time, potentially, to have as much spacewalks as I had. And um, uh, I guess I'm lucky. Um, and I just want to be ready for this program whenever they call us to do what we need to do. Excellent. And uh, recently, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko were approved for a year-long stay on the ISS. So as a veteran of two long-duration flights, uh, what do you think the biggest mental and physical challenges would be for a year-long mission? You know, um, the space station is really in a neat place right now, and people had asked me when I was up there what I thought about it, and, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's going to be a cakewalk it's, uh, or totally easy to be up there for a year, but it's not going to be exceedingly difficult because the space station is set up you know it's a working laboratory there's lots of science going on there's lots of maintenance going on because it is a laboratory and it is like a house and things break and things happen so I think they're going to be busy they're not going to be bored um, they're going to have different crews coming up which is going to be exciting I think it's always fun when new people show up and uh, you get to show them around or they get to show you what they've been working on so uh, I think that's all going to be great I think one of the biggest things is, you know, um, be ready for things to not go as planned. You know, <laughs> that happened during our mission as well. You know, everybody lays out a nice plan, but it is space, it is exploration, and things are going to go differently and be ready for that and be, be open that, uh, you know, with open, have open arms to welcome that type of challenges. I think that's, uh, that's the biggest piece of advice I'd give them. Excellent. And uh, next year, our museum will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Valentina Tereshkova's flight as the first woman in space. And what do you think the prospects are for the future uh, for women in space? Wow, you know, it's interesting. When we were up there, it was actually the 55th anniversary of Sputnik, and I was I couldn't help but say, you know, like, look where we were just 50 years ago when we launched satellites from Earth, and now we're launching satellites from space. And 50 years ago, Valentina Tereshkova flew, and now look at we're up there, women being, you know, commanders of the space station and doing spacewalks. And it's a big change, actually, if you, if you sit back and think about it. And so, you know, who knows where the next 50 years is going to take us. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the next generation. Of, of ladies out there getting ready to explore. And I happened to watch your uh, video tour on the station uh, the morning before you returned to Earth, <laughs> and I was struck by the impression that you still didn't quite believe you were leaving the station yet. <laughs> uh, were those emotions, uh, those were the ones that you were feeling, and, and would you like to stay longer? 
I would love to have stayed longer. It's like, like I said, it's a great place to live and work. Um, it really feels like home. It feels comfortable. And it is a little bit surreal when you think about uh, being up on the space station, having lunch, and then by dinner time, you know, being back on the planet. So it's a little bit weird to believe that you're actually going home. <laughs>